Okay. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the features and of this engine that's on the back of all these Gator Tracks boats. This is a 35 horsepower Mud Buddy Hyperdrive Sport. Um, it's a Briggs & Stratton Vanguard V-Twin engine on here. Um, it comes standard with a clutch. It comes standard with power trim. A lot of features on this motor are floating handle that moves up and down so it's comfortable while you're sitting as well as when you're standing. It also will allow the prop to hit something in the back and kick up without it taking your shoulder out of socket when you're holding on to it. There's a lot of play in that handle. It moves up and down a pretty good bit. Some of the controls at this end, this is standard stuff. Kill switch, we always recommend that you wear the kill switch on these motors. Um, there's a little bit more tiller torque on these than a traditional outboard motor and uh, we always recommend you wear that as long as that motor's running. This is a power tilt and trim. You got up, you got down. The trim is used as your four wheel drive per se. You can get this motor and trim it out to the optimum performance and throw your big rooster tail out behind you like you do when you're running down the canal and you can shut it down, talk to somebody and take off again without ever touching the trim in most instances. The only time you're really going to use that trim hard and heavy is when you're stuck or if you have a really big load in the boat you're trying to take off, much like an outboard. You get hung up in the mud, hung up in the lilies, the vegetation, you want that sucker down as low as it'll go. You bury that propeller as low as it can get underneath the water back there. That way every time it turns, it's turning 100% mud or water and it's not blowing any air or cavitation across the top. The clutch is a really nice feature on this motor. That's neutral. That's forward. Back to neutral again. And then that's a momentary. As long as I hold that back, that propeller turns. I let it go and it quits turning. So if I want to bump up to a dock, bump, 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 up to a dock, or pick up my decoys, that's all you have to do. It's, it's a more controlled going forward. This is, let's go on down the river. This is, I'm picking up my decoys, or I'm getting close to another boat, or I, I still need that controlled environment. You will use the snot out of that. That's a good feature to have on there. And then here's your throttle right there. Very simple squeeze grip throttle. Let's move to the back. I'll show you a few other things on this. All right, guys, this lower unit on this Mud Buddy Hyperdrive Sport, it comes in 27-inch shafts, just like you see here. It also comes in a 32-inch shaft. The time you might want the 32-inch shaft are guys that are in coastal water, dealing with a lot of mud flats, pure mud, not much water on top of it, really need to dig through the mud, then you would go with the longer shaft on the back. If you're running in hard bottoms, stumps, logs, rocks, things like that, and the only reason you have a mud motor is because you're going to hit hard underwater obstructions, the 27-inch, and you're not dealing with mud a lot, the 27-inch shaft is fine. This is a sealed system. No water gets in, no grease gets out. This is not like the old long shafts of the old days that you had to carry a grease gun around with you everywhere you went. This little sticker here is there to remind you that every 50 hours, basically all you're doing is checking your grease level every 50 hours. And the way that you do that is you remove this bleeder valve. You take that bleeder valve completely out. Don't just crack it. Take it out and set it down somewhere and hook your grease gun up to this Zerk fitting in the back. Pump grease in there four or five squirts and grease should start to come out of this hole right here. If it takes 24 or five squirts to get grease come out, you may have a problem with a seal and it needs to go in for maintenance. But if it doesn't, then that's all you do. You cap it back off again and don't touch it for another 50 hours. Very important for you to know, the first time you hook a grease gun to this Zerk fitting and don't remove that bleeder valve, you will blow the seals on this lower unit. It's not a maybe. It's going to happen. So never hook a grease gun here without taking this bleeder valve out first. Okay. Good. There are a couple of other uh, grease points on this motor, not as consequential as the one that we just talked about by the propeller back there for the lower unit. But there's a grease fitting here, a couple of squirts a year, and all that does is just allow the, boat, the motor to pivot on this bolt running up and down. No moving parts or anything in there. You do want to hit it, but it's not as important as this one back here. A couple of few squirts a year will search you fine on that one. Underneath here is the same thing. This bolt right here that the motor pivots up and down on has three Zerk fittings, and this is how you access them. You trim them down and hook your grease gun to those. A couple of few squirts a year, again, just so the motor can pivot up and down on there. This is where you drain the oil. This is where you change your filter at. 
any Briggs & Stratton lawnmower center anywhere in the country is a full warranty center for the engine portion and any parts that you need on there. So your local lawnmower shop can also have these as well if, if, if you don't want to go back to the place that you bought it at. You can get some, a lot of these parts anywhere. Um, we use 5W30 Mobile One synthetic oil in the motors. Unless it's a high performance motor like a 45, then we use straight 30 weight oil in that. Um, they tell you to change the oil in the manual about every 50 hours. Uh, however, the first time during the break-in procedure, they want you to change it about half that. 20 to 25 hours, go ahead and change your oil. Also, when you're uh, in doing the break-in period, it's okay to run the motor wide open. It's not like an outboard that you have to gradually build up to that. You can run it wide open, but just don't leave it pegged wide open for five miles. Come off of wide open throttle every now and again by varying your throttle response. Run it wide open for a mile, back off to three quarter throttle for a half a mile, and then back wide open again. Just vary that throttle response during the first two hours that you have the machine. Another thing to do during the first two hours of the machine, we talked about this lower unit being a sealed system. No water gets in, no grease gets out. But what makes that possible is there's a set of seals right here in the back. These seals need to seat properly, and they cannot do that if they overheat during the break-in period. So I usually tell guys, treat it like it's an outboard motor the first two, two hours that you have it. Let water cool these, these seals inside here when this prop is turning. Keep it in the river. Keep it in the canal. Don't run out on a mud flat the first 30 minutes you got it trying to get unstuck with no water to help cool these seals because they'll never seat properly and you'll always have some leakage back here. Keep it in the water. Let it cool it for the first two hours and that's about it. After the first two hours you can pretty much run it like you stole it. You don't need to do anything different. Okay. When you're taking care of your new Mud Buddy motor, let's talk about the fluids that go in it. For the grease in the lower unit back there, the Mud Buddy manual says any quality marine grease. Don't buy cheap grease. Buy a good, it's not specific on which one. You don't have to get number two white lithium or anything like that. Just a good quality marine grease to run in that lower unit. For the oil, we use synthetic oil, 5W30 Mobile One in the regular motors and straight 30 weight oil in the high performance motors like the 45s or the 5500 Black Death or the HD7000. Fuel, I cannot tell you how important it is to run fuel that doesn't have ethanol in it. These motors are no different than any other outboard or lawnmower engine or chainsaw that you guys are having trouble with right now because of ethanol gas. If you can avoid ethanol gas, do it. If you can't avoid ethanol gas, keep a bottle of fuel stay bill or seafoam additive or some type of gasoline additive to, to uh, combat that ethanol getting its way into this engine because the carburetors and ne uh, needle and float assemblies in these carburetors are very small and very intricate and they can't tolerate very much trash in there or, or separation like ethanol gas does and it certainly can't handle much water. A good option to have on there is a fuel water separator as well. You can add those and buy them anywhere. You can get them from the factory, you can get them at Bass Pro or you can buy them after market but a fuel water separator is another really good feature to have on your hull. Expanding a little bit more on the type of fuel that you run in these motors. The 35s and the stock motors, the 23s, the 27s that are stock, those are low compression motors that need to run low octane gas. 87, 89, somewhere in there is fine for that. When you start running the high performance motors, the 45, the 4500 Black Death, the 5500 Black Death, the 6000 or the 7000, those are built modified motors and they need high octane gas. So you would run the good stuff in the, in the, in the modified engines and just standard low octane gasoline in the stock motors.